right I tell you the chance and let me explain what's going on here yes I'm gonna get into the ultimate buyers guide for the MacBook Pro should you get the Apple Silicon should you get the Intel versions and which Apple Silicon MacBook should you get but first I want to just introduce these laptops this is the Apple Silicon laptop no it's not well you wouldn't be able to tell the difference because this is actually the macbook pro 13 2 thunderbolt 3 model this is what's getting replaced with apple silicon right looks exactly the same but it's got apple silicon in it so i will be comparing the apple silicon macbook pro and macbook air to all of these laptops and let me introduce these laptops this is the xps 13 2 in 1 intel 11th generation best you can get from intel and it's going to be versing let's pretend this is apple silicon going to be versing this of course the intel version and the apple silicon version of the macbook pro and over on the right there we do have a lenovo slim 7 and that thing has an 8 core ryzen 4800u so that thing has compute off the chart now this laptop doesn't cost nowhere near what these cost so you know don't judge the screen on that it's interesting that both these screens here are 500 nits on the xps 13 and the macbook pro 13 but clearly the xps is brighter so before I just talk about these laptops and which one you should get, maybe a PC or Mac, let's talk about which Mac you should get. So if we're talking about the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, should you get the Apple Silicon or the Intel model? Well, first of all, Intel model, you can run Windows on it. Intel model, more compatible with all the software, everything works and it's gonna work for a long time. You're gonna have no headaches whatsoever. It's a mature platform. Intel model, you can get four Thunderbolt 4s. The Apple Silicon one will only have two Thunderbolt 4s. Actually, the Intel version has Thunderbolt 3s. Well, there's not much difference between Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4. I do have a video on it if you really wanna know. Just type in my name and Thunderbolt 4, it will come up. But you can get four Thunderbolts with the Intel version. Also, you can use eGPU. That is a big deal, okay? So basically the Intel platform here, Intel platform on the MacBook Pros, you can use an eGPU. And remember, the 6000 model GPUs will be able to go in Mac Pros. So you'll be able to use those GPUs, which are pretty much the best GPUs you can get at the moment on an Intel MacBook Pro. Can't do it with the Apple Silicon one. Also, you have some Intel sort of exclusive stuff, like AVX 512, etc. Now, when you're trying to choose between the MacBook Pro 13 Apple Silicon and the MacBook Air Apple Silicon, the MacBook Pro version, extra 100 nits on the screen, MacBook Pro version, extra GPU core in the base model, you can upgrade the MacBook Air to have eight GPU cores, but the MacBook Pro version also has a 61 watt charger versus 30 watt charger in the MacBook Air, and it has a fan, so it's gonna go harder for longer, it's gonna perform better. It also has better battery life, okay? So you're informed now, make your own decision. I can tell you from my perspective, I'm probably gonna wait until the next MacBook Pro uh, Apple Silicon because we're gonna have like a design like this. Now this is the XPS 13 2-in-1, so of course you can do, you know, all the two-in-one stuff. Yeah, which obviously you can't do on a Mac and you can write on the screen with a pen, etc. But even this is a two-in-one, so it does have thicker bezels. Two-in-ones have thicker bezels because of the hinge, right? The XPS 13 and XPS 15, virtually no bezels. But even this, look, compared to that, the MacBook. And that's what the Apple Silicon MacBooks are like. They've got that big bezel on the top. Sometimes when I look at these Macs, I go, have I got the resolution right? Am I cropping or something? Because look at it, it's freaking huge. Some men would be embarrassed by the size of that. So yeah, I do think that there's gonna be MacBook Pros that are gonna have a new redesign, but I don't think they'll have the battery life because I just think they'll make them smaller, to be honest. But anyway, today I saw some interesting things, right? So I will be comparing the XPS 13 2-in-1 versus the Apple Silicon Mac versus an AMD 4800U compute eight cores it's eight cores full noise so let's just pretend this is apple silicon for the moment and we are comparing these and i'm going to tell you what i'm going to do these are the best of the best now best of amd best of apple silicon or m1 best of intel and pretty much one of the best windows laptops period now when it comes to compute amd will kill it i don't care it'll kill both of these so the apple silicon 11th gen intel if we're just using the compute power so that's no hardware encoding anything like that because you've got hardware encoding you've got all these decoders and encoders like h.264 h.265 same here with the quick sync and the intel iris plus graphics or you've got avx 512 as well if you start using that sort of stuff 
these will beat that. Now, a lot of people call that fake performance. And this is how I'm going to test. I'm going to try and get outside of the hardware encoded stuff. Because if this is Apple Silicon and I run applications that are optimized for it and are using the hardware encoders in this, it'll run rings around probably both of these. But then again, if I use an application that uses AVX 512, a lot of audio doors do, this will destroy both of those because it's using AVX 512. And then again, if I'm just using raw compute power, not hardware encoding on any of these, the AMD will kick it. It'll smash them. So I want your help. How am I going to do this? Because I don't want to be using the Apple propaganda benchmarks or hardware encoding. I actually saw a video today, no joke. Some bloke, he got an iPhone and he compared it to an iMac. Oh, look, it renders this video so much faster than an iMac. It was using hardware encoding on the phone. The iMac wasn't. I mean, the iMacs don't even have QuickSync. I mean, that's been going on for years. I mean, I've shown many times where a laptop can outperform like a workstation desktop just because it's using Intel QuickSync or some hardware encoding. The Mac Pro 28 core can not even play H.264 properly. All of these laptops will outperform it with H.264. Yes, workstation Mac Pro. So I'm going to try to get outside the advantages of each system and just give you raw power. That's with the GPU. CPU, I'm going to test the game, sort of try and match them up the same. Please let me know down there in the comments, how am I going to do this? Because it's hard to not favor one over the other, because as I just explained, you know, AVX 512, you know, the efficiencies of Apple Silicon. Then you've got the raw compute of the AMD system. I also read an article that the Apple Silicon MacBook Pro beats the MacBook Pro 16 in Geekbench. Who uses Geekbench? Like, are you serious? And that's the thing with reviewing these. A lot of these Apple people, they get the reviewer's guide, they do the things that are in that, you know, they drink the Apple Kool-Aid, and they're just ultra crapidarians. Look it up, ultra crapidarians. They're not giving you the right information. But I can do one test now. Now, we know that the Apple Silicon will resume instantly. So let's close all these and let's see how the resume is all right so how am i going to do this what i'm going to do is i'm just going to lift these two first then i'll lift that just make a mental note of which one's faster instant all right so i think you can see that was instant let's see the amd oh, oh that's pretty quick Oh, that's not even a touch display. This can come down to hardware vendor, which one, you know, resumes better just by firmware or whatever, how much they're optimized. But the Apple Silicon one will just resume like your phone. It will just be instant resume like your phone. But this Intel Evo, man, that was instant too. And even that, that Intel Mac was instant too. So anyway, catch you in the next one. I can't wait to test it. Wolf, Tullio.